You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're taking your calls right now, 800-585-1051. We're just asking, what are your thoughts and what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia? All right, very scary. It's not scary. It is scary. It's 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 it's, it's not scary. Because you can go to protests and and you can end up dying, being I mean, dead. I mean, that girl, that young lady that died, never thought in a million years a crazy ass person would run their car into a crowd, knocking people over, not giving an f about a human life. Well, she was the, peacefully protesting. Absolutely. Well, here's the thing. Like you know, they keep talking about the alt right. The alt right is just an extension of racism that has been going on in this country from day one. All the principles that they stand on, the racism that they have, the bigotry that they have, it, this is what this country was founded on. And now they period. feel especially empowered. Absolutely. They feel Donald empowered Trump because this, the alt-right got a president in the White House. Say what you want. And, until he tells me he's not a white supremacist, until he denounces white supremacy, he would not even denounce the KKK when they endorsed him. You got to call it like 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 what it is. But what has changed? He's been like this since he got in office. Nothing has changed. Oh, absolutely. This is what we've been seeing. It's, it's, it's not a surprise. This is the campaign he ran on. Um, you know, we, we all saw this coming. He showed us who he was, and we should have believed him. But for whatever reason, they still voted the crack ass crack in the White House. Well, we have Stephanie <laughs> on the line. Stephanie, good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling this morning, Stephanie? Now, you're, you're a Caucasian woman? Yes, I am. And go ahead. What, hey, what, Stephanie. What you got to say? And that's the part. I hate what happened there, and I do not have a racist bone in my body. I listen to y'all's show every morning. Thank but you. I don't like that on here being called white cracker ass devils. Well, I'm not talking to you, boo. And, that, and that's the thing. We have to we, we have we have to separate it, and you need to separate it. You yeah, you, but say, baby, when people listen to stuff like that, that that's what pisses them off. And you get respect that you give. You know what I mean? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't want respect from them. I don't want respect from them evil yeah, ass, prejudiced, racist, no, bigoted people. people like that, boo -boo. You say, I understand you, but that's what I, I, that is one thing that just really struck a nerve listening to a station that I listen to every morning while I'm at work. Well, I, I, I understand. I understand which, where you're coming from, but you need to understand one thing. If you're not a racist, bigoted, prejudiced, cracker-ass cracker, then it shouldn't bother you at all. In fact, you should look at those white people in Charlottesville and say, you know what? Those are white devils. Those are crack-ass crackers, and I'm not one of them. And I do not tolerate or put up with any of that around me. Believe me. There you go. Well, so, yeah, call, call so call it out. Condemn it when you see it at all times. Exactly, I do. It is not right for anybody to put anybody down. As a white lady, that's what I say. I do get picked on by black people where I live. All right, well, and, I, and I do get called those names, and that's what I say. That's all I want to put out there to Americans in whole, white and black. You get the respect that you give. That's right. right. Well, thank, thank you for mama. listening to us, Stephanie. We appreciate you. And, thank you. And if you're not, if you don't like being called a crack ass cracker, don't act like one. Hello, who's this? This is Tanisha. Hey, what's up? Tanisha, Good what do you morning. think about what was going down in Charlottesville, Virginia? Good morning. Man, first off, I think it's sad, you know, that we still going through to this in today's society. And I think it's messed up that our president is acting the way he acts. I mean, he is causing so much division among America. Instead of bringing people together, he's not even stepping up to the plate to bring this United States together. You know, he's causing so much trauma among us and you know the whole fact the whole thing with what happened in virginia you know is messed up because we're thinking like all these old white people are the ones that are in the kkk's and now it's like these younger generations right. are just you know, they're just outrageous and Word no up. one is stepping to the plate to right. make them pay for what they're doing they're like just getting away from doing what they're doing like i got four young kids Four black boys, and I promise you, anybody do any crap for my kids, it's gonna be some something somebody gonna pay. Flat right. out. That's right. Thank you for calling, Mama. She, she's right. right. Donald Trump is building walls when he needs to be building bridges. And she's right. It is a lot of these younger kids, teenagers, twenty years That's old. That's what's scary. That I, you don't answer. You think it's older people that okay, they grew up in whatever era, but it's really like young yeah, people that are raised. learning these. Dylan Roof was twenty one. Dylan Roof, who shot up, you know, the, 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 those beautiful people at Emmanuel AME Church in my birthplace, Charleston, South Carolina, was 21. But that's how these kids are raised nowadays. They, they, they are raised to support these type of things. Like I said, driving through my neighborhood, I see so many, I used to see so many Trump supporters and Trump's bumper stickers and, and Trump flags. And, 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 and I, and I, I want to say something else, too, man. Don't call me upset that I'm calling certain white people crack ass crackers and white devils because if it don't apply let it fly if you're white 
and you're not racist and you're not bigoted and you're not prejudiced, you should be calling them crack ass crackers and white devils with me. You should be trying to make the distinction. You should be trying to separate yourself from that prejudice that is ruining the ecosystem of our country. Well, you can't tell people what to be offended by. You can tell them what you mean by it, but, you know, some well, people are offended by Well, you shouldn't. Guess what? Um, it's not what you call it. It's what you answer to. So if I scream, cracker ass, cracker, and you look up and say, who are you talking to? A hit cracker will holler, damn it. All right. 800-585-1051. We're talking Charlottesville, Virginia. Hey, Ashley, where you calling from? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee. Now, what are your thoughts on what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia? Trump Trump just needs to get the hell out of there, first of all. I think everyone else agrees with that. Right. Um, but I, I think it's sad. I think it's I think it's pretty sad what happened out there. Um I just wanna say something though to Charlemagne too. Um uh-huh. I just wanna ask what how come you're always saying cracker ass cracker? Well, I expl- <laughs> I, I explained it this morning and I'll continue to explain it. There's a difference okay, between I didn't hear you. There's a difference between good white people and white people that are allies and racist, bigoted, prejudiced, cracker ass, cracker white devils. There is a difference. And I think that we need to stop. We, we can call them white nationalists. We can call them white supremacists. We can call them alt-right. But we can also call them crack-ass crackers and white devils. And I feel that good white people and white people that are allies need to use their privilege to combat prejudice and call them crack-ass crackers, too. Well, you know, I was on vacation over the weekend. A lot of people were mad about the term crack-ass cracker because so? they, they feel like you're talking to every white person out there. I don't know how they feel that way when I'm specifically showing you the distinction. And guess what? If that's what you're harping, harping on in this situation then you're letting me know that you don't really care about this situation. If we're talking about what happened in Charlottesville, West Virginia, and I call a bunch of evil, prejudiced, racist, bigoted, crack-ass, cracker, white devils exactly what I think they are, and that's what you're harping on, what I'm calling them, then that lets me know you don't really care about the situation. Mercedes, good morning. Good morning. Hey, how you feeling this morning? I'm feeling great, but this news that I'm hearing on the radio about these white people, if somebody come at me wrong, I'm spitting in their face. I don't need to kill. Well, well, here's the thing, baby. It's not all white people, and that's why I keep using the term crack ass crack and white devils because it is a difference because there is a lot of white allies out here, and it is a lot of good white white people out here on the right side of history. Yeah, you're right, but I'm just letting them know. I want them to know that if anybody come at me with some disrespect, I'm spitting in their face. I'll stop. Well, Mercedes, I'm just going to tell you this. If you spit in their face, you can get arrested for it. So it make sure. Make I'm sure not putting my hands on them. Really? You still can get arrested for spitting in somebody's face. Yeah. So if they, it, <laughs> make sure make sure they hit you first. If they hit you first, then you can go buck wild. But you just can't start spitting on white people. That doesn't work. You can't no. do that. No. And once again, <laughs> she won't have if to they just. they come at me with some disrespect. If they come at me with some disrespect. But this is the thing. You won't have to go around just spitting on random white people if white people who are actually good and white people who are actually allies use their privilege to combat prejudice and stood up and said, look, I'm not a cracker ass cracker. I'm not a white devil. OK, you I, that's it. Mercedes, don't spit on anybody today. All right. Do me that. For all me. right. All right. Thank you, mama. Tanisha. Yes. Good, good morning. Now, you were at the rally, Tanisha. I was at the rally. I was actually protesting with Dr. Cornell West. Mm-hmm. Tell us about and... it. I was in the, the, the same front line as, as, as he was, and the police failed us. The police is the reason why Heather Hare did not make it home mm. on Saturday. The police were in full body armor. There's a video somewhere circulating around with me arguing with the police, like, why are you guys not out here protecting the people as well? They mm. were barricaded around the, the neo-Nazis and the white supremacists. They were on the outside. I have my own video where I'm pointing out you have police over here, mm. you have police over here, but you don't have any police in the middle. The only people that were protecting the people was a militia group. There was a group of men walking around with guns that were from New York, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, different parts of, of, of different states. It was a militia group. And when they started spraying tear gas and macing people, mind you, the mace was coming from the neo-Nazis. The neo-Nazis were macing the Antifa people. Mm. So, really, the police were just protecting the not the Nazis. Again, I don't know how much, how many other ways to put it. Mm-hmm. The police, the state police, the Charlottesville Police Department, and 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 whoever else, whatever whatever other police were out there, they did nothing. They got paid time and a half. Or nothing. Well, they said the police were scared. They said it was unsafe for them. So they said a lot of times the police had to retreat and leave, which is crazy to me. The police being afraid. Let me give you this analogy because this happens a lot in Charlottesville. When nonviolent drug offenders are wanted, 
that's thrown on the news right. as armed and dangerous. And you have a group of white men walking through Emancipation Park with fully loaded guns. Now, let me give you another analogy. I want you to picture that same scenery with 100 black men. How do you think that would have turned out? Oh, it would have been, oh, been bad. They wouldn't oh, even got a permit. absolutely been bad. We know that. We know that. Good morning, Woody. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? You from Charlottesville, Virginia? Straight from Charlottesville, born and raised, 46 years old, sir. Talk to us. We never knew that damn statue was downtown. I was, I'm born here. And the only time we, as black people, go downtown is a little club we'll go down there and go to on Friday nights. But we don't f- around downtown because black people really don't go down there. We knew not to go down there because the federal courts was down there. And we dodging all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But until Wes Bellamy came into office and started talking about this statue, you know, and then start bringing all this stuff around here, a lot of people mad about that sh- man. Because we did, we felt, you know, when I called all my homies up, and I'm like, how y'all feel about this? And they was like, man, f- that statue, man. We Stop cursing, bro. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. They, were, they was like, they don't care about that statue. And I was like, okay, I just wanted to see how y'all really feel about it. It was like, we didn't even know the statue was even down there. We didn't even care about the statue. So, you know, a lot of blacks wasn't down there on Friday when a lot of people look at the stuff on TV because it could have been a whole lot worse than what it was. It didn't really affect Charlottesville. I was in Charlottesville yesterday to be with my people. And it was a calm feeling down there because everybody was together yesterday and it was really not affected because we always have a basketball tournament every summer down in that park, Thompson right. Park. All right. And and all the black people was there and there yesterday. All the people that, if you would have seen on TV that would have been there on Friday, was at the park yesterday. And there wasn't no disarray or anything like that down there. Nobody was really worrying about it. They were hurt by what they were seeing. Right. But a lot of people was like, they ain't bringing that stuff down here because if they wanted the nuclear to see the black people, then we was all in that park yesterday. And they could have got everything that they wanted yesterday. But nobody showed up. And then I started looking and was like, this is all TV stuff. This is what the news put out. I never realized that until this weekend. Okay. Well, thank you you for your call, bro. Thank you. I just wanted to say that. I I appreciate y'all. Thank you.